Well, first of all, welcome. Welcome back to Toronto. It's always Thank great to much. have you. And um, it's got to be an amazing feeling for you to be here as a filmmaker, not an actor. It's a different one, that's for sure. Uh, this has been a, a labor of love, this project, four years in the making. And it's very personal. It's very revealing uh, and uh, a, a unique film. So um, I'm glad that it's here. I'm really grateful that Toronto accepted it. Um, let's talk about how this all came down. Um, I mean, I, I know how it all started, but I want you to talk about it. Do you want this a little bit more ever? toward me? Yeah. Or not? Okay. It's just space enough. Is yeah. Okay. okay. Um, I, I mean, I, I personally know how it all started, but I want you to, to talk about um, your struggles as a musician and how this all came about. Well, we have been signed since 1998, um, and uh, really grateful that we have been signed, that we got a record deal. I still remember how excited we were, how difficult it was to get a record deal. Uh, and that meant that we were going to be able to share our music with people all over the world and then hopefully eventually tour the world. Uh, and those things always went hand in hand for us. Um, we put out an album. It was a disaster. We put out another album. It was a disaster. Uh, but halfway through that second album, uh, we had a breakthrough. Our second single uh, broke, as they say. And we sold millions of albums uh, and had an opportunity to tour the globe. So uh, we came back after that, really excited to make another album, and then found out that not only were we never going to be paid a single penny, which was fine, we'd gladly do what we do for free because it's so amazing, but that we were also millions of dollars in debt. So we started to look into it, and under, I guess we discovered this tangled web of... Uh, of um, you know, of a record contract and started to push back. Eventually it led to us leaving the record company, them suing us for $30 million, and we filmed the entire thing. Yeah. So uh, intense but uh, uh, important part of our journey. Yeah, completely rewarding, I would think. Yeah, it, it helped make a better record. You know, it was a time full of conflict, full of uncertainty, uh, but really helped us hone in uh, on 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 a specific moment and, and feeling in our lives, uh, and that was uh, this this period of conflict. I mean, it was insane. We never thought in a million years that we'd have any success, and then we never thought that we would be sued after having that success. It's got to be so tough for musicians these days, with you know free downloads and all that kind of stuff that people get illegally on the internet when you're making an album whatever and you you know your sweat blood sweat and tears goes into something and then you know you find out that it's all over the internet and people can download it for free anyway you know it's got to be so amazingly aggravating well I, it's not so aggravating to me because I, I i look at it like it would be great if, if there was revenue generated from that because, of course, that would support more artists around the world. People could uh, could make a living, and not just to be the biggest band in the world, but also just to make uh, a, a modest living as well. Um, unfortunately, even if no one, no one was stealing that money, the record companies don't pay the artists anyway, so I'm a little used to it, whether it's the customers stealing music or the record companies stealing from artists. The artists still really aren't seeing uh, any of the revenue generated from the sale of albums, but I'd still rather have, like they say in the movie, like one of the people interviewed in the movie, Flood, says, uh, you know, it's still five million people stealing your music. It's still five million people that you're touching right. and that you're sharing your work with. and. That uh, has a, a really great value. Yeah, I know. I mean, you've played here many times, and you yeah. have a ton of fans here and, and throughout Canada uh, who are extremely supportive. What have been their reaction over these last four years, and how supportive have they been to you guys? Canada has always been great for us. Uh, we played some of our earliest shows in Toronto at the Horseshoe, and um, you know we played just about every venue in town here and uh, toured the entire country uh, numerous times. So it's always been a really special place. It was one of those places that we felt like people understood us from the very beginning. Um, so we'll always remember that and have a lot of gratitude for it. You you make your film or your you know the stuff that you do 
not as Jared, but you have a, you know, you have a pseudonym in Bartholomew Cubbins. And why do you use that name? Why don't you just it's, use your real name? I, it started as a, uh, just a way to protect the work and not have a distraction there. I was already in the band and, you know, had some other baggage with me, so I didn't want to kind of soil the, the, the work that was being done by putting my name on it as well and then it, I just I got used to it and uh, I started to feel you know embarrassed about putting my name on it. and so I always just put Bartholomew Covens but I'm not walking around with oh sometimes oh, strange hat sometimes. Yeah. why not you know <laughs> that's right it's okay so how over the last few years I mean things have obviously evolved you've kind of kissed and made up with the record company and everything so how would the, did that reflect on your editing of this it didn't at all. I mean, we told the story that we wanted to tell. We didn't censor the film or uh, edit it a certain way just because we happened to be signed to a record company again. Uh, most of the people that we were fighting with have either been fired or left. Um, the the acquisitions company that controlled EMI, the company that sued us for $30 million, they since lost control of the company to Citigroup and one of the largest financial disasters um, ever. So a lot's changed, uh, but there was always a really strong core group of people that worked really hard on the band's behalf at the record company, and we weren't fighting them ever. A lot of those people we interviewed in the film. It's the system, it's the institution, it's the, the power brokers at top that are uh, uh, hounding and, and hoarding and um, setting a very bad example for so, the way that business should be done. So going forward with your music, how do you see things progressing for you guys? I think that the world in general, as far as music goes, is becoming more about transparency. Artists have uh, an ability to to have a relationship directly with their audiences around the world. You don't need to rely on a middleman as much uh, these days. That's wonderful. You still need boots on the ground around the world, and so there will always be a need for a company out there to uh, help artists or help people realize dreams and goals, and that's great. But I think that because of technology, on one hand, you've had the loss of revenue uh, because of piracy, uh, but on the other hand, you've had uh, the ability to have a much more transparent system, and I think that's what we're moving toward. That's awesome. Um, you know, you are an amazing actor, and you really can't forget that, and I hope that you know, because I, I know your fans don't want to not see you on the screen anymore. What's the future about for you? I don't know. Maybe Abraham Lincoln. I got the beard. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, that got cast. I you did. missed the boat on that one. <laughs> no, come on. Seriously, Jared. Like, um, you really, I mean, just this festival alone, how many films that you've been in um, that I've seen and I've interviewed before. And you're a brilliant actor. Like, seriously. No, I, I you, appreciate it. You really, I really hope that you're not going to let us down and not do anything more. Well, I appreciate it. I never thought of myself as a very good actor, so maybe that's one of the reasons I'm not rushing back toward the screen. But uh, uh, I did, there, there is something magical about making films. It's such a, it's an incredible medium to work in. And uh, one day, you know, my beard is a little bigger and uh, I'm not so busy with other things. Uh, I'll have the opportunity, I hope. What was the movie that changed your life? Probably Requiem for a Dream, I would think, if there's one, yeah. That was freaking amazing. <laughs> I'll never forget seeing that here. Yeah, I don't think I spoke for three days after. It's a. It was an intense one to make, as you know, just like watching it, it was uh, very intense. I actually saw Darren Aronofsky yesterday. I was on the set of Noah, mm -hmm. um, Noah's Ark, yeah. uh, and that was really interesting to be back in a movie set for a second. I was going to say, they didn't give you a little role in that. I could you, have you see, got, been an extra you with the beard. Have with that beard. All I need is like a burlap sack and a pair of Uggs. <laughs> so when did you know that music was your calling then? I had been making music for a very long time. We've been signed since 1998, so it's been a long time, even just professionally. Uh, but even you know, a decade before that, I'd been making music, and really, I wanted to be a painter, an artist. Um, but I think this film is unique because I, I'm sharing with people a side of myself I've never shared before. I've been in front of the camera quite a bit in my life, but I've never ever um, pulled back the curtain in this way. It's very intimate. It's very revealing. It's strange for me because people are going to know a little bit more about me. Um, and I'm a really private person, so it's a, 
I'm kind of negotiating that right now. It didn't hit me until a few weeks ago. I was like, wait, people are going to really get to know us. That's bizarre. Not just through our work, but through seeing us. But I think it's important because you're telling a really important... Important story. for the film. For the rest of my life, I don't know. But if you want to see, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in my pajamas, um, waking up, getting out of bed, and uh, we put it all out there. So it's surreal, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. No, but I, it's amazing that you've, that you've done this and that you're, you know, you've been bold enough to do it. And, and what is like, what does the record company think now that it's all over? Like, or have you heard any rumblings from them or... I think that they probably, uh, I couldn't imagine that they would watch the film and feel great about their business. But maybe they'll think a little bit about their business um, because there, there are a lot of really great, smart, creative people in the record business. Uh, and it's not too late to change things. Um, I think that they all know that change is, is inevitable and, 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 and healthy at this point. So... I'm not saying this film is going to change anything, but it was a film that I, I felt like I, I was compelled to tell the story. Uh, it's ch it's challenging, it's brutal, um, it's very honest. It's about uh, art and commerce and uh, this David and Goliath story of this battle between uh, us and the label. So what do you tell young musicians out there who want to go out and make albums and, and make music that they're passionate? Uh, well, these days, there are a lot of options that we didn't have when we signed a record deal. So I would tell young people to make sure that they did as much as they possibly could on their own before they ever reached out for help. Because the more that they're able to do, the more they're, they're able to accomplish, uh, the less uh, they're going to uh, be at the mercy of the status quo. Quo, and um, you know you want to walk into any situation, whether it's signing with an independent label or a major label, um, with as much um, uh, input as possible. Yeah. So next up for you as a filmmaker, you've got something on the back, back burner. I think as a filmmaker, I would direct a narrative film next. Um, before I would act again, I would probably direct a, a narrative film. Making a documentary, you have to really embrace the imperfect and you know you write your story after you shoot uh, so you write your script after you shoot so it's the reverse process so I think uh, you know looking uh, it would be interesting to do uh, to make a narrative film for sure well, I think you'd be brilliant at that and oh thanks like I said you know best of luck to you and the band you guys are fantastic and you know you have tons of supporters here so thanks we'll be you know, back yeah I know you will and like I say just don't give up the acting thing because seriously dude you are one freaking amazing actor I appreciate you it you should not give that up oh God, give me some thought thank okay. you though you're very kind lovely talking to you and thank you so much for spending time with us